You're listening to Discutafel, the podcast on eco-friendly gardening and permaculture. Hello listener, welcome to Discutafel podcast episode 79. This was released on June the 4th, 2020. My name is Yvonne Smit and I'm delighted to be your editor and host. Listen to part 4 of our short series of uh, Disco specials on Dutch wetlands and water. We called the series From Warden Sea to Garden Pond. And if you happen to have missed the first three parts, please go to your podcast app and check episodes numbers 70, 73 and 76. Today we probably published the last part in the series. In part 3 we made an appointment to all visit a nearby pond or other still water to investigate life in and on the water. This small excursion is not only enjoyable, it can also help us to imitate nature in our own eco-friendly gardens and invite creatures to the gardens. So it works best if the water is shallow, not too deep and if you suspect there's a lot of wildlife there. And if you take the kids, please see to it that it's a safe place. This week I visited a nearby city park, which used to be a rather wet area. But how's the situation nowadays in spring 2020? Watch some pictures in the show notes of this episode on discutafel.nl and listen to the Disco special. So, imagine... It's a windy and warm spring day. Let's go. Disco special. So this is the sound of a windy and sunny spring morning in the Wester Park. The Wester Park um, was laid out after the uh, new um, dwellings were set down here. I live in um, part of the city which has been built in the 50s, just after World War II. And on the edges of this um, neighborhood, a new neighborhood has been built in the uh, past, well, about 15 years, I think. And there used to be a lot of green there. Open space, trees, ponds, and now there are houses. So as a compensation, they built the Vester Park, which has, exists of two parts. Uh, it's being cut uh, through by a um, rather busy road. And I'm sitting here now on a bench in the Vesta Park, looking for some ecological features here. And I wonder what's the influence of this park on the gardens nearby. I know that uh, since the park is here, we have had more bird species in and near our garden um, like duck, heron, goldfinch, long-tailed tits and also more buzzards high in the sky above us and even the Eurasian reed warbler and although it's not necessarily because of the park I think the um, diversity, the biodiversity in the park uh, attributes to the uh, kind of birds, the species, bird species which um, uh, visit our own private garden. When I sit on this bench and look um, down I see 
lots of feathers here as if a um, pigeon has been killed here or nearby and been eaten here so that's a trace of something natural going on I suppose perhaps I tell you something about the layout of this park you might hear some voices in the background because on one end corner there is a small playground for the children who live in the apartment buildings nearby there are um, water streams and um, beside the water streams uh, many many reed plants and perhaps you hear the wind blowing through the poplar leaves the poplar trees it's not a coincidence that the um, poplar trees uh, are called poplar it's the, um, the, the the Latin word is populus and that's because in Roman times the uh, sound of the wind blowing through the trees reminded them of um, uh, people talking the, the, the populus talking on the market square there are several hedges which have been kept low. I, I think it's because of uh, safety. There are lawns where people can sit and enjoy. And there are also signs that uh, dogs are not allowed on those lawns. Of course, there are footpaths, bridges, and stony walls. They have been very, they've become very popular in the Netherlands. And, uh, public areas in the, the past uh, decade or so. I'll put a photograph of those stone walls on discotafel.nl so that you know uh, what, what I'm talking about. Well, let's go and find out what we can find about the bird species, plant species, and perhaps even um, water animal species here. What am I going to use to find this all out? What's my equipment here? Well, um, I collected some things in my wheelbarrow and just walked from my garden to the park. And I've got with me with me some uh, nail tra name trails. And I took some uh, books on uh, water plants and uh, water animals. Um, I have a dip net here with me, a magnifying glass, a white bucket and uh, my spyglass, as I explained in episode 76, uh, which has been online since April 23rd, 2020. I've got something to eat, something to drink, because it's rather a warm day today. I've got my binoculars, um, and I've got a, 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 a small cushion to sit on. So... Uh, did I mention the white bucket? I'm not sure, but I've got a white bucket as well. So, let's go. Near the children's playground, I see some typical trees for wet habitats, like the willow and the alder, the wilg and els in Dutch. At the water's edge, I recognize the common marsh bed straw, or Galium palustre in Latin, or Muraswalstro in Dutch. It um, has white flowers at the moment. I'm recording this on the 31st of May 2020. And it has very tiny white flowers, and I see small green leaves which are in a circle around the stem. It's a very floppy stem, so it's leaning to the grasses and the other plants which are on the water's edge. It seems that this um, common mar marsh bed straw is, um, um, it, it likes permanently uh, wet uh, soil and um, it's quite common plant here in the Netherlands um, has not too many wishes um, as long as the water is not um, acid 
he doesn't like very acid water. Yes, now I'm sure the Eurasian reed warbler lives here in the Vesta Park. You might hear the traffic and the background. It's, I'm just near to the road, the busy road, and the reed warbler doesn't seem to care at all. One of the more common water birds, birds you certainly know is the coot or meerkoot in Dutch. It's a black bird, totally black, but he has a white uh, part of his, um, how do you call it in English, a snavel. Hello, this is the studio here, a beak or bill. Thank you very much. This was uh, some commentary from the studio. Anyway, um, the coot, um, you can see it everywhere in Europe, uh, on all kinds of waters. But he, he does, doesn't does like uh, streaming water, uh, wild water. So still water like these uh, ponds in the Vesta Park are perfect for him. And he's very adapted to humans. Uh, you can easily see him making his nest just near to the water's edge and near to the pavements or roads. His uh, nephew, so to speak, the moorhen, or waterhoen in Dutch, is smaller, also dark, but more like olive brown and some gray parts. And he has um, a red spot on his head. The moorhen, uh, too, can be seen everywhere in Europe in fresh water, also in uh, small very small ponds, but never in big groups like the coot. The moorhen is uh, capable of walking on walking on uh, water plants, but he can also climb into small bushes on the water's edge. It's not very common with with birds, but uh, in the case of the uh, moorhen, the young chicks, which has um, grown up um, in, in spring, they help their parents to raise their little brothers and sisters who hatch later in the year. In search for some water creatures who live in the water, I went to a special place here. The local government, they provided the disabled people who are uh, dependent, depending on their wheelchairs, they provided them with a special place here near the water, a platform where they can go fishing or uh, enjoying uh, the water life. Um, it's very quiet here at the moment, there's no one to be seen, but uh, it seems to be a, be a very popular place with the geese, because there's a lot of geese shit here. Anyway, when I look into the water, um, I see water lilies and some other water plants, but the water itself seems to be very um, dull, really. It's, it's shallow water, because, uh, I suppose it's um, rather warm at the moment because it's the beginning of the summer and it has been warm the past couple of weeks. So perhaps the creatures have moved to another uh, pond here in the, uh, another stream here in the Vesta Park. But um, I used my white bucket, I used my dip net, but um, nothing interesting at all. Canadian geese are everywhere now in this Vesta Park and for some people they seem to become a nuisance because they visit gardens as well and eat the grass. 
Uh, many of these uh, geese are individually known by the government. They have neck collars and, uh, with numbers so they can uh, trace them and... Um, um, oh dear, there's a, a wild goose now. It's looking for trouble with these Canadian geese. Sorry to interrupt you here, this is the studio again. I suppose you don't mean the wild goose, but the grey lag goose. Anyway, those green neck colors are not very pretty, but this is a way for the government to um, manage the amount of geese and know where they are. You can recognize the Canadian geese um, by its, the color of his cheek. It's a whitish and he has a black color and a black head and a grayish brownish feathers on the back and a white belly. So I've reached uh, another shore here of one of the ponds here in the park and see what um, we can make of it, of the water creatures in the water. I'll take my bucket and my dip net. Be careful. Take out some water. Well, lots of lots of creatures, but not very spectacular. We call them watervloe, and in English I think it's called a uh, water flea. Daphnia, perhaps. Very, very small creatures. They um, are, I think, about a millimeter, perhaps two. And they're swimming very fast in the water. And they're very, very common here in the Netherlands and I suppose in your country as well. They feed on um, uh, uh, parts of plants uh, like algae. When the female uh, has eggs, the, the eggs overwinter in the water and then in springtime you see the, the Daphnias again. Nice. They are living creatures, but not too spectacular. When you look at the pictures on discutavel.nl of the Wester Park here in Zetterhombos in the Netherlands, you might have the conclusion that the park isn't a very neat park, not very well cared for. Well, that's exactly the reason why I like the park. Um, some people might say there are too many weeds in the on the lawns and um, uh, the the bushes haven't are not tidy they haven't been pruned I know that the management um, has the intention of making um, a cost effective and still interesting natural like environment green environment for all the people who live around here in the apartment buildings and the people who work here because uh, next to the park there uh, are many schools, uh, academies, so students and tutors used to go here at lunchtime and have their lunch. And um, I think this is a, uh, they have been successful in creating a green environment which um, you can enjoy, uh, perhaps not the neat city park you might expect, but when you take a little bit effort, you have lots to see, feel and hear in this park. It has been very dry. It hasn't rained hardly in the past few months here. And you can see the results here in the park. The Vesta Park is meant to be a, a wetland park. And of course you have the ponds, 
but um, the the lower parts of the lower patches used to be um, rather um, damp in springtime but it's bone and bone dry now what does this mean for the water plants or the moisture loving plants and the insects I can I can hardly see any insects flying around here perhaps this is not the right moment or the right year to investigate or perhaps it means this is the result of three subsequent dry spring seasons here in the Netherlands where diversity has gone back I don't know I don't know it's still a nice place to be it's still green people enjoy themselves walking with their dogs it's okay but I know a couple of years ago when I came here there was more water life to see water more life which is used to water it's not a very happy conclusion of this expedition I think let's hope for better times time I uh, walk back to my own garden and I'm back home again and it seems a good idea to me to try my own pond again perhaps I have some more results here well that's remarkable apart from the dozens or hundreds of water fleas as we have seen in the park in the Western Park I also see a couple of water boatsmen in my bucket and a lot of algae as well that's because of the sunshine on the water surface water must be warm hey and there's a small water snail Let me see if I take away the algae. Hey, hey, that's a, a larvae of a, how do you call that in English? A libella. Let's have the studio again for a translation, please. I just forgot the word. All right, if I must. Dragonfly, you mean. Thank you, of course. Of course it is. Hi, that's... Not bad for a first try. Well, let's give you your freedom back in my garden pond. There you go. It's just, well, maybe a quarter of an hour later than making my recordings in, recordings in West Park. And so the time is the same time of the day. But I see a lot of more and more insects here. Also drinking water from, from, the, from the pond. A wasp type, type uh, insects. It's quite a different difference. And dragonflies as well. The well-known blue ones and red ones. But that doesn't matter. They're very welcome here in my garden pond. I also see top poles. They're hiding with the sun but when I walk past the pond my shadow scares them off and they move and so now I can see them swimming to the depth of the pool the depth of the pond and I just thought I had made my last recordings on this water a pond exp excursion in my own garden when I saw this big dragonfly coming towards me. Um, it's, it's a libella in Dutch, 
Um, in fact, all the dragonflies are dragonflies, but in Dutch we say waterjuffers and libellen. And the waterjuffers are the small ones, the tiny ones, and the libellen are the big ones. And this is a very big one, a fat one with blue uh, um, belly. And it's flying like a helicopter, really, and trying to find uh, some prey. It's um, it's his habit to find uh, a, 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 the same place somewhere on a on a on a branch of a, of a water plant, for instance, and look for prey, and come back there again and again. And he's on one of the uh, twigs now that I've laid in in the pond. Uh, we always lay sticks or twigs on the surface of the pond each year, each spring. Uh, firstly, to keep the ducks away. The ducks which come from the Vesta Park to our garden to find a private spot. <laughs> but we don't want them in, the, in, the, in our pond. And secondly, it's very useful for the birds to have a drink or have a bath. On, on a, in a safe way when they go and sit on these br- branches on these twigs in the middle of the pond they are safe for our cats our cats cannot reach them so every day we see blackbirds and starlings and even goldfinches having a bath having a drink in the middle of our garden pond Well, now I will conclude this um, excursion and I hope you have enjoyed the background noises of Zertogenbos and the Wester Park and my own garden. And I hope you have a nice excursion as well. In my experience, when you give yourself a task and go and find interesting birds, plants, trees... When you concentrate on that task, you will always have an interesting journey. And I wish you good luck on your water experience as well. Disco finish. We're back in the Discutafel studio again, and you have been listening to part four of our Disco special series on wetlands and water. I hope we've inspired you to explore your pond and waterways in your town or village. What have I learned and noticed on my small excursion? What are my thoughts on wetlands and gardens? Well, I know some animals like water because they can find food there, shelter, a nesting site like the coot, the moorhen, the dragonfly. And some plants feel at home on the banks with their feet in damp soil like willow and common marsh bed straw. I was very, very lucky to find out that the nearby water in the Vesta Park means the Eurasian reed warbler drops by now and then from the Vesta Park to my own garden. City park management can make a difference. On the other hand, Vesta Park used to be rather damp, but it's very, very dry now. Is this because of climate change? I'm not sure. And of course, I was satisfied when I discovered that more creatures were in my own garden pond and around my own garden pond on the same afternoon than in the Western Park. I was a little bit proud, to be honest. Is making a wetland garden a good idea in your case? Well, I'm convinced it's a good idea to adapt to your local situation whenever possible. Perhaps Look to your own soil and natural green spaces nearby when designing your own garden. But I do think there's always room for a small pond. At the moment I'm working on Dutch episodes. And when will the next English episode be online? Well, 
To be honest, I'm not sure. We might take a summer break. As long as you have a free subscription, you're sure the following episodes will be on your smartphone as soon as they are released. And in the meantime, let's go outside. And until next time. Thank you.